dealing with white fans trying to gain sympathy after he's knocked out violently by Alexander Povetkin and this whole thousand day WBC. Let's talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button for the latest and greatest in boxing. Now, I don't even have to make this video, but I'm doing it because of new media. And I, I'm not going to make this too long. I'm going to try not to make it long. But there's a lot of fans, Dillian White fans, they're upset. You know, their hearts are ripped out because he got knocked out by Alexander Povetkin. Good fight. He was up on the scorecard. It happens. One punch can change everything. But there's a lot of misinformation and mistruths being put out. And, you know, we can't stand for that in the world of boxing. Dillian White and Eddie Hearn have been on this crusade that they've been so wrong, wrongly treated. And, you know, everybody was out to get them. And then now none of that even matters. So again, me making this video about a position he doesn't have or a belt he doesn't have is really redundant. But I just don't appreciate the the myth, myth the myths and the mistruths that are out there regarding this thousand days. Like when did Dillian White started counting? You know what I'm saying? Like he just made up some date and started counting. He keeps saying he was the mandatory. I'm gonna use this video to prove that wasn't the case. And if I'm a YouTuber and boxing reporter and I can piece this all together, how come the fighter and Eddie Hearn, the promoter and the fighter who are living it, can't see these different clues? Now, for starters, let's go. Dillian White is not the first person who had to wait for a while to not get a fight. You see what I'm saying? And I'll prove that real quick. Gennady Golovkin became the mandatory for Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto, not really a true middleweight per se. And I don't think Cotto at that point of his career really wanted to fight Golovkin. He was knocking everybody out and stuff like that, right? So you see this article. It says that Golovkin will not entertain a Cotto catchweight. He's like, I'm a middleweight. Why should I fight at a catchweight? It says, unlike those three fighters, Golovkin, by way of winning the WBC's interim title last year, is the mandatory challenger to Cotto's crown, right? If Golovkin defeats David Lemieux, which he did, and Cotto retains against Canelo, which he didn't, then they will be in line for a mandatory showdown. But my point is, he had been the mandatory. He had been the mandatory. And he never got the fight. He never got to fight Cotto, right? And I believe he was the mandatory for Sergio Martinez as well, right? So Golovkin never fought Cotto, and Cotto's now retired. Jorge Sebastian Highland. He was the mandatory. He became the WBC mandatory, right? And that was in 2015. You guys see it right there? This fight right here. It's for the World Boxing Council International Middleweight title. See the date? 2015. He was Golovkin's mandatory. Same thing. Golovkin was out fighting whoever he was fighting. Rosados and Lemuse and Rubios, Macklin, whoever, right? In between this time. And he never fought Jorge Sebastian Highland. Now, as it turns out, that was in 2015. He didn't get a, a shot at Golovkin ever. They've never fought. If you look at his whole resume, he later got a final eliminator thrown in some kind of eliminator with Jamal Charlo. And that was his last fight to date because Charlo crushed him. So that was two years later. So two years of waiting. And he still never got the Golovkin fight. And that's Jorge Sebastian Highland. So. First of all, Dillian White is not the only person who's had to wait. You can also use, since we're talking about Charlo, Jamal Charlo. He was supposed to be the mandatory for Gennady Golovkin. Never got that fight. And then when Golovkin lost to Canelo, that became Canelo's mandatory. And guess what? Canelo became the franchise. So he franchised out. And Charlo to this day has not fought Golovkin or Canelo. But Eddie Hearn and Dillian White chose to play this card. And they were the only ones counting. While guys like Jamal Charlo just continued with his career and says, man, these guys are going to have to fight me at some point. And now he's involved in an upcoming pay-per-view next month, you know. And he has a bright future ahead of him. And he wanted the Canelo fight. He wanted the Triple G fight. It just, he couldn't get it. They, they were doing other things. They didn't want no smoke, whatever, right? But Eddie Hearn and Dillian White chose to threaten to sue, gripe about it you know, get angry, make it a public issue. So this is Dillian White complaining. It's an absolute joke. I've lost count how many days you have been mandatory now for. I mean, you sound frustrated and that is totally understandable, but how do you manage that frustration? You know what, it, it, you know, um, 
I'm so far in now, what do I do? Do I just abandon my position and move on and go and pursue something else? I just keep pushing forward and just keep encouraging the fans to just keep putting pressure on the people. You know, it's a joke. The boxing world and the fans need to put pressure on Marissa Suleiman to mandate Tyson Fury to fight me, to fight me next, you know? Johnny, can you understand Dillian's frustrations? I mean, if ever there was a fighter that has earned their shot at a world title, it surely is Dillian White. He's he's never avoided anyone. He's fought everyone that is put in front of him. And he's proved himself time and time again. You know, it's, it's a massive injustice. I think anybody that knows... He said it's a massive injustice and the female correspondent said he's never avoided anybody. However, Dominic Brazil, let's pull it up. Dillian White and Dominic Brazil ordered to fight by the WBC, right? Let me clear this message. That was in 2019. Dillian White, Dominic Brazil ordered to fight by the WBC. 2019, you guys see that. Dillian White never fought Dominic Brazil. So he never fought Luis Ortiz. He pulled out of a eliminator with Luis Ortiz per the WBC's order. Deontay Wilder told him, in addition, as an added bonus, fight Luis Ortiz and you have my word, I'll make it happen. You know, you'll get the fight if you could beat Luis Ortiz. Dominic Brazil also called out before that, called him out. So that was 2019, right? Right? Dillian White and Dominic Brazil. Actually, that's not the link. Hold on. There's one before that. Dillian White, Dominic Brazil. Dillian White. Look, Dominic Brazil confident he would knock out Dillian White. Right? So Brazil been looking for that action. So the news anchor said that he's never avoided anyone and surely he's he's frustrated and all this and that. Again, trying to gain sympathy. Trying to gain sympathy. So I have it pulled up. Now you see I did a video two years ago, right? Two years ago. Deontay Wilder's mandatory. Dominic Brazil calls out Dillian White for the number one spot. Deontay Wilder's mandatory. Dominic Brazil calls out Dillian White for the number one spot. This is Every two. Way Dominic, Dominic Brazil says, says he's open, open to fighting, fighting Dillian White, White to, secure to secure that, that number, number one mandatory, mandatory position, position for, for Deontay. Deontay. Right. This is August 25th, 2018. 2018. And this is not for the people who are fans of my channel. This is not. Um new information so i link to it sky sports dominic brazil would welcome a fight against dillian white again this is from august 2018 we're in the pandemic year of 2020 dominic brazil would welcome a fight of dillian white so this is the home network of dillian white sky sports where he's from a uk based company Dominic Brazil has welcomed a fight with Dillian White as he believes it would be, quote, right for him to battle the British heavyweight rival in the WBC rankings. Dominic Brazil, who's from California, said the Californian was installed as the mandatory challenger for Deontay Wilder's WBC title. Boom. So how is it that Sky Sports, the author of this article in 2018, had the wherewithal and the information and knowledge to know that Dominic Brazil was the number one mandatory, right? Says the Californian, Dillian White is not from California. However, Dominic Brazil is. So clearly they're referring to him. Says the California was installed as the mandatory challenger for Deontay Wilder. WBC belt after his win over Eric Molina last November, much to the dismay of Dillian White. So clearly more indication that the first part is about Brazil. It says much to the dismay of White, who is the WBC's number one contender. There we have it. This has been on record. But for whatever reason, Eddie Hearn, Rematch Room and DAZN were on this crusade lying to the public, saying that because he had some version of the WBC silver, that he was the mandatory. When in fact, he did not become the mandatory until his fight with Oscar Rivas. And I'll prove that. 
says White versus Revis, WBC interim title and a mandatory position on the line, right? That was when he fought Revis, White versus Revis, 2019. So Dillian White lying, there's only 365 days in a year. So if he's talking about he's been waiting a thousand days, then that means he's lying because that means he's been waiting years, you know? He's been waiting years, but he wasn't the mandatory up until the Revis fight. So once again, Eddie Hearn and Dillian White, the charade is up. The charade is up. Johnny Nelson, all these people in UK media, they're showing sympathy because it came crashing down when Povetkin knocked him out. They've been on this crusade lying to the public saying a thousand days, thousand days, this and that, right? Dominic Brazil calls out Dillian White. They fought Derek Chisora in a rematch. Why didn't they fight uh, Dominic Brazil? Why didn't they do with the Luis Ortiz fight like the WBC and Wilder suggested? Why did they pull out the Q-Brad Pulev title eliminator? These are all mistakes that rematch room made. Instead, they were chasing like money grabs and easier fights and stuff. Joseph Parker, they they slung that on pay-per-view Sky Sports box office instead of fighting Q-Brad Pulev to secure the AJ mandatory slot. But guess what? Q-Brad Pulev is supposed to fight Anthony Joshua. So Dillian White could have got a title by staying to the eliminator and beating Pulev. But then... Eddie Hearn lost the purse bid. And I'll pull all this up. White, Pulev, Eddie Hearn loses purse bid. So purse bid is an auction. Q-Brat Pulev. Boo, see how quick I pull this up? Q-Brat Pulev is upset with Eddie Hearn and Dillian White. Right? After Epic Sports won the purse bid for the IBF elimination, eliminator bout against Dillian White with a bid of 1.5, double what White's own promoter, Eddie Hearn, of Matchroom, Rematchroom Boxing bid, I was expecting White and his promoter to run away from the fight, but I didn't expect them to be such jerks about it. Pulev. These, these guys are extreme manipulators and plain schizophrenics. See, he ain't feeling that UK energy. I can't believe what I'm hearing and it, and... What a tricky way they choose to run from the fight in Bulgaria. The whole time Hearn kept talking in circles about negotiations and how they are still trying to bring me to the UK. All this while they had a date and place was announced for a fight in, in Bulgaria. Sophia, a formal IBF contract was sent to Dillian White, but they didn't sign it. So the reporter, female reporter just said Dillian White never avoided nobody. Why didn't he fight Pulev? Because they were going to stage the fight where Pulev is from because Eddie Hearn got outbid by more than double by some other baller promotion, Epic Sports, and they didn't want to chance it. So they took the wrong chances. This is not some club show. The bottom line is they lost the purse bid, and instead of playing by the rules, Eddie Hearn and his fighter decided to pick up their marbles and go home with their tails tucked between their legs. So Hearn and White did everything they could to avoid fighting me. Bro. So I don't have the same sympathy. You, when you pulling out of eliminators with Luis Ortiz or not, you know, fighting Luis Ortiz after being ordered, you were ordered to fight Brazil. Brazil called you out. All this is documented. Kubrat Pulev was an eliminator. Kubrat Pulev looks like the guy to fight Joshua next. So Dillian White getting knocked out by Povetkin. That was another fight. It was a cherry pick gone wrong. Eddie Hearn tried to play God. He thought Dillian Wright was ready for Povetkin and Povetkin had other plans battled two knockdowns and came back and slept Dillian White you know so all this thousand days and lies and stuff it's all come crashing down you could have fought Pulev for the final eliminator you could have fought Luis Ortiz Dillian White called him an old man but you just lost to someone born in the same year you lost to a guy who's about to be 41 next month right this is all well documented and you didn't become the mandatory until after Wilder had already knocked out Brazil his true mandatory who called out Dillian White, as I've just depicted and showed you, right? And Sky Sports knew this because it says the Californian Brazil was installed as the mandatory challenger. So at what point did Dillian White and Dillian White and Eddie Hearn start counting this alleged thousand days? They're doing all this for sympathy, but I don't feel bad because you put yourself in this position. You 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 try to fight Joseph Parker off a loss to to force it down uh, 
as a pay-per-view, you know, because he was a former champion, when you should have been fighting Pulev. You, you're willing to fight Derek Chisora, who's up there in age, and guys like Povetkin, but you didn't fight Luis Ortiz when the WBC ordered it. Now, boom, just to add insult to injury, this is the WBC explaining everything that went on. We have a process which we follow in order to confirm a mandatory contender, which is only by the vote of the Board of Governors. You have two ways of achieving that, fighting a final elimination bout or being voted under special circumstances by the board. We do this in the open floor in every convention. Everyone is entitled to be there. It's an open meeting and uh, we hear from everybody and then the board proceeds to make the voting. In the case of the heavyweight division, uh, Wilder has been a victim of the circumstances. He was going to fight his mandatory title defense in Russia when Povetkin had an adverse finding and that had a tremendous consequence. The fight was off. Then we had ordered uh, Povetkin to fight Steven for the mandatory as a final elimination. That fight fell through again due to an adverse finding. With that Hold up. So, Mauricio Suleiman already explained this to the UK, to Dillian White, to Eddie Hearn, and all you fans who are now trying to show sympathy. Wilder is the victim of circumstance. Wilder was supposed to fight Povetkin, right? Wilder versus Povetkin fight off drugs. That should bring it up. Alexander Povetkin tested positive for a banned drug called meldonium, right? It's a PED. So his May 21st Moscow fight was now canceled. So the guy that just knocked out White years later, a couple wars late, like a Anthony Joshua lost later. He got stopped by him. He lost to Michael Hunter, but they said it was a draw. So he'd been, he put more mileage and more age, more years have elapsed. The same guy that knocked him out tried to cheat to fight Wilder. Then because he had the particular Russian drug or made in Russian pharmacies, meldonium, they, it had recently been banned. So based on a technicality, Povetkin, they, they couldn't tell when he ingested it because it had only recently become banned earlier that year. So the WBC said, ah, it's a little bit shaky, but we'll let you slide. We'll put you in a final eliminator with Bermain Stavern, right? And that fight was too supposed to happen in, in Moscow. So Wilder, he left Russia when Povetkin failed the drug test, they had to sort it out. Wilder ended up hurting his hand, but knocking out Chris Ariola. And then the WBC, based on that technicality, gave Povetkin another chance to fight Stavern, right? And guess what? Two failed drug tests for PEDs in the same year, ESPN. Alexander Povetkin fails another drug test, bout with Stavern canceled. So Stavern had to go home, and I interviewed him about that. The video is on my channel. So you see, Wilder was the victim of circumstance. Povetkin, he was supposed to fight him in Russia. Wilder, they always say bum squad and this. He was about to fight the man in Russia with, with no frets, right? Povetkin failed that. He messed that up. He fumbled that back. Then they tried to give him a second chance. And then Povetkin failed another drug test in a final eliminator. Look, forcing his vacant interim world title fight against former title holder Stavern to be canceled. So everything Suleiman is saying here, and I don't always agree with Suleiman, but what he's saying here is all facts. That's why when Stavern, he was left without a dance partner just like Wilder, right? That fight fails through again due to an adverse finding. With that fight falling through, the WBC voted in favor of proving Stevern to be the mandatory contender, which was criticized by the fans and by some media. We accept criticism, but we ruled under the circumstances because Wilder had not made a mandatory defense in two years. None of his fault. Then Wilder signed. That's important. He was supposed to fight Povek in his mandatory, failed a drug test. Right. So he said he hadn't made a defense, but it wasn't Wilder's fault. Years. None of his fault. Then Wilder signs to fight Ortiz. And in the. Listen to this. Wilder signed to fight Luis Ortiz in November at the Barclays. Wilder signs to fight Ortiz. And in the semifinal fight, Stevern is signed against Brazil. And we call it a final elimination bout to confirm the mandatory contender. Then Ortiz has a adverse finding. So Steve. So another guy failed a drug test instead of fighting Wilder clean, Luis Ortiz.
Tavern takes the place of Ortiz. So they bump Bermain Stavern, and I went to that fight, credentialed. Went. Stavern was the late replacement. You guys know what happened in the second fight with Wilder. Three weeks before the fight, and we got Dominic Brussel with a signed contract for a final elimination bout. And when the substitution is named uh, Molina, the WBC board approved that if Brussel won the fight, he would be named mandatory because he had a signed contract. Had Molina won, he would not have been mandatory because he just came into the mix through a different situation. I understand so, that Barclay card, Wilder got screwed out of the Luis Ortiz fight, his number one option. Luis Ortiz failed a drug test, banned substances, right? So, they they bumped up Stavern, who was fighting in a final eliminator on the undercard with, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be Stavern versus Eric Molina, or Stavern versus, excuse me, Dominic Brazil. And when Stavern got elevated to the main event per Luis Ortiz failed drug test, the WBC saying they voted to now make the Eric Molina in Brazil fight, who was a ranked person, for the mandatory for Wilder. And Wilder destroyed Stavern, so he took care of that. That was his mandatory. Then his next mandatory was the one who won the final eliminator. It's that simple. So this whole, like, um, crusade and trek that Eddie Hearn have been on, they've been lying. And the feelings and, and the position that fans or media could have, and we rate the fighters according to the WC rankings. So uh, we have number one, Dillian White, who is the WBC silver champion, Tyson Fury, number two, Luis Ortiz, number three, Dominic Brazil, number four. But Brazil is a mandatory challenger of the division. See, so he told you, he explained how it came into play, how it came into play. He said that they fought for a final eliminator and the final eliminator. A lot of that happened based on people trying to cheat to fight Wilder and failing drug tests. And nonetheless, you see it on screen. Sky Sports, a UK media, they knew about this. Brazil would welcome a fight against Dillian White. And he literally says in this article that me and Brazil or Brazil said me and white can scrap. It says, you know, I thought the Dillian white fight and myself was going to actually happen this year. Brazil exclusively told Sky Sports he's bound with his situation with the WBC and his silver belt. And I have the WBC mandatory. So this article from 2018, again, confirming that Dillian white is not the mandatory, right? So it's a UK website that Dillian White fights on this network in the UK. This was a UK fight in the UK. This is who aired it, Sky Sports. And it says he's bound with his situation with the WBC and he has a silver belt. And I have the WBC mandatory, right? I only thought it was right for him and myself to get in the ring and square off as the fans would love to see it. So hopefully that fight comes to fruition in the near future. You see what I'm saying? It's up. To, he's definitely up to Dillian White, and I'm a fan pleaser, and the fans want to see it. I'm going to be the guy to give it. I'm in a situation where the belts are beautiful, but I want to, and I want to hold the belts by all means. But at the same time, I want to please the fans. If they want to see it, I'm going to make it happen. So this was Brazil's attitude. Shout out to Brazil. He don't get enough credit for that. He says I'm number one mandatory, and you're number one contender. But we can just eliminate all of that by fighting each other. That's what he's saying here. Right. And I'll link to this article so you guys can see. So that's what he's saying. He's saying, yo, we, we you know, let's cut the semantics. If there's a problem, you fight me and then we'll we'll take it from there. Right. That's what he's saying. But guess what? That was in August of 2018. Let's see who Dillian White ended up fighting. Let's see. Let's see if he fought Dominic Brazil. This is Dillian White. OK, Marish Wag, No. Revis, no. Oh, that's right. In 2018, at the end of the year, this is who he was fighting. Derek Chisora, a guy he had already beaten years prior, two years before. Look, you see that? He fought Derek Chisora in 2016. So why did Eddie Hearn decide to make Dillian White rematch? That's why I call it rematch room. Rematch a guy he had already beat rather than take Dominic Brazil up on his word 
and make that fight, which would have been a good fight. Bring Dominic Brazil. We know Brazil's willing to travel because he fought Joshua. When Joshua, that was his first title defense when Joshua became a champion after he knocked out Charles Martin. So we know Dominic Brazil's a road warrior. He fought and got knocked out by Joshua in the UK, right? But guess what? Eddie Hearn tried to play God. He tried to stretch out matches that no one was caring for, like the Derek Chisora 2, and make these pay-per-view events instead of placing his fighter in the right positions in final eliminators. And now none of it matters because he got knocked out brutally with one shot. So all this thousand day stuff, miss me. And that's how you cook a man. So stop it. Like this UK sympathy. Oh, Dillian White, he's been patiently waiting. No, it's not what you expect. And he's not the first fighter that's had to wait. Charlo's been waiting for Canelo and Triple G. He can't get it right now. You know what I mean? But beyond that, it's not what they're telling you. There's more than meets the eye. Checkmate. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more sports. Get unlimited access to premium content with an ESPN Plus subscription. ESPN Plus offers a variety of content, including specials, behind the scenes, docu-series like Bruce Lee's, B. Walter, and much more. With an ESPN Plus subscription, you get access to a ton of classic archive fights and replays from boxing and the UFC. Big names like, hi, I'm Mike Tyson, come and watch my fight, Floyd Mayweather, easy work, I'm rich, and Manny Pacquiao. Uh, yes, it's up to my promoter. Do, 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 do. Just to name a few. If that's not enough, you could get the ESPN bundle, which includes ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus. All three apps, one low price. You don't want to miss out. Make sure you guys click that link in the description box of all of my videos. Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.